Well, it was all that I could do to keep from trading. Sometimes it seems so useless to pay commissions. But you don't have to call me a day trader. Day trader. You never even called out a good charge. You don't have to call me Warren Buffett. And you don't have to call me Jesse Livermore. And you don't have to call me Paul Tudor Jones and more. Even though you have my brokerage password and I'll scalp for pennies as long as you will let me. Welcome back to the Steady Trade Podcast. So, you know, we're always looking to bring as much value as we can to the listeners and the market's always changing, always evolving. You know, there's, we like to say there's always a trade out there. I mean, there's a, there's always an opportunity. There's always something you can be doing, but there are, there are cycles in the market and particularly in low price stocks. And, you know, that's one of the advantages of, of my, you know, roughly 10 years of experience. I haven't seen it all, but I've, I've seen a lot. And I've seen many of these times where, especially when we come out of a, a, a crazy period, and I mean, 2016 was nuts, 2017 was even crazier, especially like fall, winter 2017. I mean, we had the Bitcoin mania, we had cryptocurrencies running. I mean, every day, it, it was not unusual to have five or 600% runners plus a day. And so we had that, for lack of a better term, two-year party. And typically what happens is you kind of come out of those phases and you hit, for lack of a, a better term, a hangover phase where things slow down. Everybody, whether they're counting their gains or, or nursing their wounds, but you see the volume come out, things kind of slow down. And we're in one of those periods and, you know, I, I really think it's important and topical to talk about. I mean, we're recording this at the end of, of February. I think the, the episode will be out either the very end of February or, or, or beginning of March. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you need to still be involved in the markets. You still need to be watching. You still need to be learning and improving. But you need to recognize that, that one of the best things to do at certain times is just to sit on your hands. And Stephen and I were talking about this, you know, text messages and off air about how it is just different. I mean, today, for instance, the only stock that is running is AN, the only low price stock, ANTH. It's running, but it's, there's no news. There's no reason. There's no catalyst. Go back to what we talk about in the, in the getting started guide to penny stocks. You want to avoid stocks with no catalyst. And Basically, the only reason it's running is it's the only stock that anybody is looking at. So Stephen and I thought it'd be good to kind of focus on that today because if you're over trading in times like these, uh, I mean, it can be up. terrible, terrible for your account and not just bad for your account, but bad for your psyche too. Um, it's one thing when things are boom, 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 those are the times to over trade. But when we've got limited opportunity if you're as a new or intermediate trader trading once a day, twice a day, three times a day, you're just going to kill yourself uh, 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 mentally. And you're probably just going to see your account grind, grind, grind down. Uh, I mean, as Jesse Livam always said, there's a, there's a time to go long, there's a time to go short, and there's a time to go fishing. And uh, this is definitely a time to go fishing. And it's, it's, it's just to give a perspective there's ways to overcome this and we'll go into it in a little bit, but I remember in November and December, especially towards the middle of December, 
I could literally at the start of a day see so many junk shit stocks up uh, that I would have orders in thinking if this hits this resistance point, it's so overextended. I don't even have to watch it. I'll just, I'll put the four different orders in and I would literally just see my screen flood with green. Like me, interactive brokers would flood with green and whichever stock was going red, I would just cut it and I'd let the winners run and I'd let the losers, I'd cut them. And, and I would just bank because there's so many good opportunities. And then in comparison with today, I've put some rules in place so I don't, I, bet, I barely trade. I've only traded a couple of trades this week. Uh, I'm sitting and I'm talking to some of my pals and they're like, one of them's I've just lost a couple of hundred. The other ones I've just lost a couple of hundred. The other ones I've just lost 80 bucks. And I'm like, guys, there's no opportunities. Like there's no opportunities. What? Why are you like trying to find something that's not there? Now, actually, just real quick, this is something I get asked a lot about, and I'm glad this isn't a slight aside, but I think this is a good topic. So exp- I called what this, the, the short technique you mentioned um, is something I frequently use, and I don't think a lot of people necessarily understand. I call it like a stop trigger order or a stop limit order. But it, when you say, you know, for the benefit of the loser or lo- lo- listeners, not losers, <laughs> listeners, um, explain what you're <laughs> explain what you're doing with those orders, because um, it's a very very useful technique to basically short into spikes, which is basically your one of your main techniques. Yeah, no, like if I ever see a really junky company company up pre-market, I, I will look at where the key resistance levels are on the chart ahead of time because I know when 9.30 hits, it's just going to be mania. And I will have kind of a starter position near the resistance level, and then I'll have a big position at the resistance level. So you're um, setting these orders, and again, this is where the confusion yeah. comes from. You're setting these sell orders, these short sell yeah. orders, above yeah. the current trading price. So let's yeah. say... Let's say this is a stock that was at a dollar yesterday. It's at two dollars this morning, and you see resistance at two fifty. So you're not enter- you're not entering at two. You want to get that spike to the resistance level. So you're actually entering these orders higher than the current trading price, hoping that the stock spikes. It to will fill push you. that. Yeah, yeah, and and it's an absolute dream come true because. The lottery runs and it's not it's not so much you're in the lottery it's what stock will get selected for you as the lottery and uh whenever it hits uh you'll think okay one of the stocks has gone off i'll watch it uh if it looks particularly strong or if it consolidates near the resistance level you'll pay attention to cut it uh, but m- nine times out of ten it comes all the way back down it'll have a big wick where it's rejected because i'm not the only one who's <laughs> who's put a short order in at the resistance point and i'm not the only buyer it was thinking I need to sell when it hits this resistance point. Uh, so generally, uh, it always works in a hot market, and, and you can have three or four winners by by ten o'clock. On, on or, or the or the beauty of it is, you have these four orders in on these four stocks, and maybe only one of them spike. You, know, we we yeah, I talk exactly. about generally. this. Uh, yeah, I talk about this in stocks to trade pro a lot. You know, let the trade come to you. Don't chase. Yeah. You know, whether long or short. This isn't a long or short philosophy you know you're you're not waiting for that stock to then drop the 180 and chase it on the short side you want it to come to you because you've recognized that this level is an important level the longs are probably going to sell into that resistance the shorts are going to pile in on that so you've got this battleground and you're waiting for it to come to you you've got four that are interesting but you only trade the one that i guess it's like the fastball down the. It's the fastball down the middle. You're you're watching the curveballs, low and outside, high and inside. You wait for that fastball right down the middle, and you and you groove it ideally. Yeah, and and it's pretty safe because honestly, it, even if it does break through the resistance level, it should it at least at least have a little bit of trouble getting through. So you will see a pullback, and if it pulls back and consolidates and ramps through, then just get out. But generally, you've always got like a second life. Cats have nine lives. Traders have two lives <laughs> when they're short in the resistance in hot markets. So we'll, so we'll move on. But if you have questions about that, remember, we, we do have the go to steadytrade.com. We do have the ask a question, submit your audio. You can do audio or you can do text questions. So I want to get back to the main topic of today. 
But I did want to touch on that because I constantly get asked about that exact technique. You know, people will say, short into spikes, let the trade come to you. How do you do that? And, and good, good example. Stephen. So. Yeah. And just, uh, your risk reward is absolutely, uh, your risk reward cannot be better because you're shorting out resistance. You're risking off resistance. It's a junkie it's stock. Just, you know, it's a junkie stock. It's just ideally parabolic. doesn't have news. You know, it's like no basically think about what, what's these, these trades that Stephen are, are, are focusing on go back to season one and everything we talked about is it, what makes a good, you know, long, Steven's looking for the exact opposite. So, so he wants, you know, we talked about having a clean chart. He doesn't want a clean chart. We talked about looking for a catalyst. He wants no catalyst, you know, he, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the beauty is if, if it spikes to resistance with no news or dubious news, nothing's guaranteed, but all you can do is stack as many things as in, in your favor as possible. Yeah. And I mean, looking back to those days back in November, December, it, w it was, I don't want to make it sound easy, but it, w it was quite easy. Go through the stocks that are up. easier, I think is the, easier. Is the right. Yeah. Easier. Yeah. It was easier. But you didn't have to do as much. Like now people are kind of grinding out. You, you, you're so careful that there's going to be a short squeeze. You've got your hand on the trigger all the time thinking, am I going to get squeezed? Am I going to get squeezed? Is this going to go red to green? Uh, it's so much, you've got to compromise more on setups. And, and that's something that I've stopped doing now. I, I noticed that the winning percentage went down from 65, 70% in November, December. And then I started losing again and it dropped down to the fifties. And, and that, that's the key barometer to know that you need to really trade less in a slower market when your winning percentage starts dropping. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's again, another thing we talk about with new traders and we've had many topic times we've discussed this about focusing on green trades you know try and be as a newer intermediate trader you want to be a professional profit taker you know i don't care 20 bucks 50 bucks 100 bucks those numbers as you grow and evolve you want to win 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 as much as possible and like you said the big guys i know a lot of guys with you know uh uh, we, we talked about Phil a couple weeks ago, or, or I think it's an upcoming episode. You know, a lot of these, some of the most successful big dollar traders don't have the best win rates, but they have the big accounts and they can make huge profits when they're right. As a yeah. small guy, you want to focus on win rate. And just like Steven said, if you're at 60, 70, and then, you know, you come into January or February, like we're talking about, and it's 50 it's 40. That's when you say to yourself, wait, remember what they said on the steady trade podcast. Let's do some other things right now. Yeah. And, and I think the, the main thing that happened to me and it probably will happen, like the biggest lesson I've learned in a, in a long, long time is how to adapt to changing markets and how it's, it's more easy to win money in a hotter market. And when you need to really scale things back in a quieter market and, you, and, and to realize that the market has changed I know that Tim Sykes was saying it the other day, but it's, it's really, really, really important. I think it's the difference between someone who's beginning and someone who's kind of getting to grips with it to realize when the market's slowing down. You know, and I, and I wish, um, I, I, I wish I had, <laughs> like, I wish I could give to you in a podcast or a webinar this knowledge, you know, because, because I get asked that a lot. I'm sure, I'm sure Sykes was talking about it because people are asking him. They're like, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know? I'm, I'm you know, keep listening to the steady trade podcast, but a lot of this is just, is, is experience. You know, it's like, it's like when I show up in the morning, I open up all my screeners, I open up Oracle, I open up all these things. And I'm like this morning, classic example <laughs> within like 30 seconds. I'm like, man, no, it's not, there's, not there's, and, and, and this is, this is <laughs> at like 7am. I'm like, whoo. Yeah. I'm like, I'm glad we're recording the podcast today because I ain't interested in trading anything. No, nah, and, and honestly, I mean, I come back and back and back to it. And I know that um, the, the only way to survive and to, and to tr and survive for a longer period of time when you're new out of this is to just have one or two setups. Like, it, because if you've got a setup saying, I will only go long with a, with a stop with a good catalyst, or I'll only go long on a multi-day breakout, or I'll only go short on a stock that's up over 50%, then you can very, very, very quickly identify if there's a trade in the market for you or not. And then just go outside and do something else. If your setup's not there, leave. 
you know, it's, it's Stephen. I it's like man, it's like <laughs> I have learned. You you, 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 you you you're still <laughs> you, you're still the guy that that strikes out nine times out of ten, but every fucking once in a while, man, it's you just put it over the fence. That was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the way you put it. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's it's super true, and and I mean it's sad because people say like learn from other people's losses, and then. I've had to make losses to learn, but then, but then you do learn in the end. And like I say, one of the biggest lessons for me is, is the change in market. You really, really have to just have one or two patterns and no one does it. Like all, a lot of my friends, they're all jumping in anything. They're trying to find anything. They're like, this moving, this moving. I'm looking at it. It's like 4% of, I'm like, guys, even if you nail it, you're going to pick 2%, 3%. I, 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 I tweeted like, today. I, I tweeted today. My entire you know, I have, everybody always asks why I look to the left all the time. It's because I'm looking at my main trading station, but um, I've got 15 stocks on my watch and I tweeted today. I'm like, every stock on my watch list is green. And the, and this is like at 10 AM and I'm like the biggest percent gainer is like 2.5%. I wanted to throw my computer across the room. I'm like, <laughs> even no, no, though I mean, people, people be like, your entire watch list is green. You're a genius. I'm like, I don't care. If I got 15 yeah. stocks that are green, if the biggest gainer is 2.5%, because I can't, I, mean, I can't, I can't buy them and I can't short them either. You know, you're looking yeah, at the same thing. Mm-hmm. You're looking at all this junk and you're like, you're not going to short some stock up 9%. You know, what, what are you, what are you going to make? No, no, exactly. And, and people are just getting frustrated and then making mistakes. And probably the best, the best way for someone new, I want to ask you what you do in these market conditions next, yep. but the best thing that I've found to identify two ways to identify if the market is strong or not. One, if there's a, a, a percent gain or over 50, 60%, that's some indicator that something's moving. Yeah. Today, uh, without, I think that today the biggest one was like 16%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it flew down. But, but the other one is I've started, I know you, you categorize your watch list as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But what I, what I do for mine now is especially short seller, um, I'll categorize mine by uh, one green day up, two green days up, three green days up, four green days up, five green days up. And then I can see which is going to offer kind of the most downside. It's obviously, stocks up four or five days are the highest probability to come back down with the most downside. And then I can go backwards to see what's the lowest probability kind of set up. G- generally, just going on, on heightened days up. And, uh, yeah, and, I, and I, I, I always, uh, I'm prone to interrupt, but actually I just want to make, let you finish. But yeah. one of the reasons I've always, for years and years, I've used that five day rolling watch list, I call it, is exactly yeah. back before 2016, when I was much more aggressively on the short side, I was doing exactly what you're doing. I would go back really. to, to Monday, Thursday, Friday and see, oh, wait a minute. This thing's this days. thing's been fading, but yeah, go ahead and finish. Yeah, yeah, no, no, just exactly that because I think um, I mean what I'm tracking especially right now is stocks that gap down and and if how often the gap down and wash, how often the gap and and then spike into previous resistance and then fill in and wash, or how much it actually gap and go again. So I'm just and generally the the results that I think I say off the data that I'm tracking is that. The more days they're up, the higher the percentage up, the more likely they are to, to, to wash and fail and not go red, green, and run. If that makes sense, that might be a bit complicated. It makes sense in my head. As always, if you're, you know, I know, <laughs> I know most of the listeners are probably confused by pretty much everything you say. So if you ever have any, again, remember the submit your questions. You know, if you're, if you're confused by any of these terms, we want, you know, our goal at Steady Trade is, you know, we're here for, I say it all the time, but the new trader, the intermediate trader, if, if anything, if you hear these indicators or these, you know, gap downs, gap ups, faders, red to greens, all the washouts, if you're ever curious about that, you know, hit us up so, so that we can answer your question, whether anonymously or, you know, or, or mention your name or whatever. So, but, but yeah, just to put it basically though, uh, before I ask you a question, the more it is up without consolidation below it, the worse, the longer it is, the better, the shorter it is, the more it's, it's closer to the, to the floor. Near consolidation, the better potential longer it is, the worse short it is in, in, plain, in plain English. But, but uh, Tim, what on earth do you do in these kind of markets? Because you're, you're the veteran, you're the 10-year experienced guy, you're the chopping wood, going out hunting, doing deadlifts, living the dream, pumped up, amped up. 
how what what do you do uh, in these quiet times? Are you trading Facebook and Twitter? Or are you trading uh, Snap? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. So what I what so we've got a couple things going on right now, and and that's why we wanted to talk about this. Um, first of all, we're in this hangover phase where low price stocks are quieter, and I think the the hangover phase is. I don't know, amplified the right word a little bit by earnings season. We also are in the middle of, well, maybe not the middle. We're probably kind of two thirds through earnings season, but February, the last few weeks, we, we've been in what's called earnings season, which are just the end of each quarter when, when the majority of stocks report their, their quarterly earnings. And we, uh, as, as we mentioned, we, we have that upcoming episode with Phil Ozark trades and he talks about it. I mean, he mostly shorts low price stocks and he talks about how earning season yeah. it's slower. And, and so I think that, that that's why we've got this kind of perfect storm of slowness in low price stocks. So what I do, what we've been talking about in stocks to trade pro a lot over the last few weeks is we're looking for, and if you're watching on YouTube, I'm doing the air quotes, but we're looking for quality companies that are up on earnings, that are pushing 52-week highs or chart breakouts, et cetera. So, you know, Match.com was one of them. IMGN was one of them. Under Armour was one of them. Twitter's been pretty good. Um, there's a whole list of them that we've been trading pretty well based on that recipe. Now, the drawback is you might be sitting at home or, or whatever punching these tickers in and you're like, geez, Tim, that's a $15 stock. It's a $30 stock. It's a $50 stock. I've got a small account. I can't trade those. What good are they to me? Number one, during times like this, it's perfectly fine not to trade, but I'm going to, I, I, I'm answering Steven's question as to what I am looking at trading wise during these periods. And Remember the rule of 10. I don't know if we've talked about the rule of 10 much on the podcast, but I talk about it at Stocks to Trade Pro a lot. You can trade. Now you have to be more patient and you have to use smaller size. But the idea behind a rule of 10 is Stephen and I both, all, all probably everybody listening loves $1 and $2 stocks. That's our, yeah. everybody loves $2 stocks. But if you're trading 500 shares or, or let's say for, ease of math, a thousand shares of a $2 stock expecting a 50 cent move, you can trade a $20 stock with a hundred dollar or with a, with a hundred shares and hope, you know, or make a plan to get two, three or four or $5 moves. I mean, we've seen that quite a bit recently in this $15 price range where if you've got smaller size and you're willing to be patient for two, three, four days, or maybe a week or 10 days, you can get multi-dollar moves. So now you're still making that four or 500 bucks on a hundred shares that you were trying to make on a thousand shares. Now, the, the caveat, the asterisk to that is these are swing trades. These are multi-day trades. You need to be patient. You need to let them work. So there, so that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking for higher priced earnings winners. When I say quality companies, that's something that as much as we make fun of the penny stocks, you know, I'm, I'm sure all of you know what Twitter is. I'm sure all of you know what um, Under Armour, I mean, Under Armour is a classic example. One of the reasons I traded Under Armour was because, I mean, it's like I look in my closet, 90% of my clothes are Under Armour. 90% of my kids' clothes are Under Armour. I go anywhere, I go to the airport, everybody's got Under Armour on and they announce good earnings. What's that going to do? That's going to create more buying. So that's the kind of stuff I look for. Now, I'll flip back and see what you're doing, Stephen. Now, I think you're doing the wise thing for the majority of newer traders and basically nothing, you know. So, so what are you looking at? I mean, are you still just waiting for your, your core setup and just not getting it? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, but just before I move on, I just wanted to ask you that, that sometimes the trouble, the trouble with 52 week highs and, I, and I've, I've, I've been, I've been on stocks of trade pro. I've been recapping on a lot of the uh, sessions and I've got your list of, of what you've been watching. And, and my struggle was sometimes you'll find a stock. It's 52 week highs. It's just had recent news. There's a breakout level near that you can buy it off. So you've got support. It's not overextended. 
but but there's always seems to be resistance above somewhere like two years back three years back i mean are you just trading these little gaps these little air pockets where you can see a push or i pretty much you know um yeah. a lot of these and and keep in mind go back to where i started with i'm not saying you know i i think right now the best thing to do is is to dial back your trading quite a bit but i think the only thing that's working right now is earnings winner well not the only thing there's always trades you just got to dig 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 but i think the most consistent setup right now is those earnings winners in the 15 to 20 dollar range that are that are breaking out on the one year chart that that i've seen in february has worked as consistently as anything yeah, and, and being under PD too, I guess it's a good long strategy as well. That's another nice thing is is you know if you've if you've you know if you're holding these two days, three days, four days, five days, you're not using your day trades, and that way, if you're if you're buying these into a late day push or something like that, I you know you're holding it overnight, you're holding it multiple days, you can keep a couple day trades in the tank for lack of a better term. So if there is a good momentum runner with a catalyst or a, a, a junk stock up on 50% on no news, you've got your day trades to attack those as well. Yeah, I mean, for me, my approach, especially being uh, more than you are trader, just, just one and a half years experience, uh, it's, I'm still in survival a little bit. I mean, I feel like it's nice that I can prove that I can do well in a, in a strong market. And it's nice that I can find the opportunities in a strong market, but but really any any trader should really any decent trader needs to to show that they can survive in any markets so th this is and it's not about how hard you can hit it's it's about how hard you can get back up when you get hit and, and this market is a little bit like being hit in a really weird analogy but um it's about survival so i'm thinking uh can i find the needle in the haystack can i make the one trade each week that puts out the green week that makes us a few hundred bucks and have the discipline to avoid the, 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 the worst of setups where other newer traders are losing. So for me, I mean, AQMS uh, was a nice short into resistance as it came down after it was up uh, on its, its second day, it was pushing the third day and it, and it failed. So that was AQMS last week, it made a hundred or so bucks. And uh, this week there was a, I can't remember the name of the ticker, but it was a, a big gap, uh, it was just yesterday, a really big gap, uh, biotech pushed up, around 40, 50%, 55% on light volume, high float, news wasn't that good. And I, and I took that for 14 or 15%. I think I tagged Sox Trade on Twitter. That was a nice 14, 15% winner on a really quiet market. I'm just looking for them. Very, very, very selective on trades. Well, and that's, that's I think, the, the biggest takeaway from this is just have your one or two setups that you have decided and maybe – Maybe you're just getting started and you don't know if these are, but track your trades, spreadsheets, profitly, trading view, whatever you use, track and, and track your win rate. And then when we come into these times, just say, this is it. I'm, I'm not, you know, I just talked about, you know, higher price stocks, earnings winners. If you've never traded those, this is probably the worst time to start trading those. I mean, that is, that is just a strategy that I use because I'm here every day, you know, every single day I'm in front of that computer. So it's like, it's at some point I need to have a few more arrows in my quiver. So that's what I'm looking at. But if you're coming into this market and you've never even looked at higher price stocks, this is wait, wait until the market warms back up. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I would always recommend um, tracking some sort of data. And you don't have to track a lot of data. You just need to be like, uh, what was the previous day price? What is the current price? How much did it move on the catalyst? What is the flow? Just track three or four things or just save the graphs of, of certain stocks with similar patterns. It's really, it's difficult. It's difficult for people who are new to identify patterns for the first time. Obviously, yeah, I think it's, thing, you know, it's, it's, another que it's another question I get asked a lot about, but I think a lot of people want to look for, you know, they hear about Stephen Ducks and his 15,000 spreadsheets and, you know, yeah. and everybody has their spreadsheet and I get asked about that a lot. And, you know, it's like you really, that that's part of the growth process too. You really need yeah. to build that spreadsheet should kind of be your own. Now start yeah. with somebody else's template, you know, get Stephen's, get mine, 
get Steven Ducks's, get Roland Wolves, get, you know, Tim Gratani's, got some on his site. You know, there's plenty of spreadsheets out there, but get to the point where you refine it so that it works for you so that it makes sense because everybody's is a, is a, it's a little different. It's like your spreadsheets, like your, it's like your office. I mean, everybody's is a little different. You put stuff different places, you track different things. Yeah, but I mean, my, I had a, I had a, uh, the first two patterns that I ever tracked, obviously my spreadsheets have evolved over time, but the first two patterns that I ever tracked was if a stock had a number of red days in a row, when it had that first green day with volume, uh, how, how big a percentage was the first green day, how much did it gap up the next day, did it gap up, how frequently did it gap up? And, and that was it, and that was very basic, but it, it gave me the knowledge to know, okay, this sector doesn't kind of work. Um, if it doesn't close strong, it doesn't kind of work. If the long-term chart's too bad, it doesn't kind of work. Do you know what I mean? And you start finding, like, you start eliminating um, situations where you would lose money buying buying the first green day. And it was the same with the penny stock and framework pattern by Tim Sykes. If the stock goes supernova, as he, as he says, and then it drops a couple of days and then it bounces, how much does it bounce? What percentage does it bounce? And, and you can think, well, how much, how much did it go parabolic? And then how much did it bounce off its... Off, off, where, where it found support. The, the, you've just got to track lots of different things and see where you can find a connection or a trend. So let's kind of wrap up. You know, we, we talked about the setups we're looking at. You know, I, I modify, I move into, during these periods, I move into what I call real stocks. You're, and I, and, and I, I think, again, you're, you're yeah. taking a great approach for, for the new traders out there. And you're saying, if it isn't there, I'm not trading. I, I, I think that is, you know, save your buying power, save your day trades, because you never know. It's not like the market tells you, hey, tomorrow there's going to be one of your trades. And if you're trading crap and then tomorrow comes and your ideal setup is there and you got no day trades, it's like, you know, and, and, and you burned all your day trades losing 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 150 bucks. And now the good setup comes along and you got no day trades. So no. the last thing I want to talk about is really, you know, this is the perfect time. I, I, I stole this from Jocko Willink, but it's like always trying to, always try to be smarter, stronger, faster. I mean, as a day trader, one of the reasons that it attracts so many of us is nobody has mastered it. You know, it, the market cannot be beat. It, it cannot, I don't care what video game you play, you cannot beat the boss in the market. You cannot, no matter yeah. what weapon you get, you will never beat him. So you always have to be growing. You always have to be evolving. You always have to be getting better. So one of the biggest things I do, I did it today, waiting to record the podcast. I, I'm, I'm reading a book by Brett Steenbarger, Trading Psychology 2.0. Read. <laughs> Um, watch whether you're watching webinars on free webinars on YouTube or you're, or you've got some instructional DVDs. I mean, these are the times that if you're like halfway through a DVD from two months ago, man, the week of, of, of fe February 20th, you should be finishing that freaking DVD. Take advantage of these times. Um, review your trades, improve your spreadsheets. Um, I think and we've talked about this a lot, you know, there is a huge connection between mental and physical. Uh, I get asked a lot. It's like, you know, we, we were joking about it before this podcast. They're like, Tim, how do you always show up with all this energy? Go, 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 go. You know, I go to the conferences. I'm on my feet for 14 hours a day. And they're like, where's the energy come from? You know, you got to take care of yourself. And this is a great week to go for a run every day. Walk the dog, lift some weights, you know, Work on always improving yourself, always getting better, because when December 2016 or 2017 comes back, which they'll come back, we all turn into hermits. You know, I know what I was like back in December. I don't, I don't, I have this standing desk. I don't know if I, basically the bathroom, the coffee maker, and my desk was the only three places I went every day in December. So get ready for those days you know, maximize them now for when the busy times come back. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I would definitely say uh, if you haven't yet found one or two patterns that really work for you, 
then don't even like watch the market for the open. And uh, when you realize that it's quiet, just, just spend your time studying, 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 looking for setups from previous history of going back through history of the stock market through video lessons or webinars to find a pattern. And if you do know a pattern, uh, start tracking as much data as you can and, and looking to find an edge in that pattern. Uh, and, and that's the best, that's, that's what I'm doing right now. I, I track as much data as I can on a few different patterns and I just look for an edge every day and I make more graphs, different graphs, look at different data in different ways. And, uh, and other than that, I, I'm like you, I get myself out for a run. Um, I, I think, how can I make a YouTube video a little bit better? How, how can I think of something more engaging or funny? Uh, and, and yeah, and, and go and see friends and do fun stuff. Yeah. I mean, that very good point. Money. Just don't yeah, lose yeah, money. Exactly. Because, <laughs> you know, if, if there, there's a time to be a hermit, you know, just like the Jesse Livermore quote, I mean, there's a time to never leave the house, but then there's other times when it's like, you know, one of the reasons we love trading, one of the, I'm willing to bet one of the biggest reasons people found steady trade was because they're, uh, they're interested in the freedom that trading provides. I mean, ultimately money, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but ultimately the reason people want money is for freedom. I mean, yeah, it's cool to look at a bunch of zeros in your bank account, but uh, whatever. I want to have the freedom to do whatever I want with my kids, hunting, fishing, take a day off. I mean, that, that's the goal. And I'm sure that's why a lot of you are here and recognize the times that the trading isn't great. And if all you're going to do is chop your account up, lose money, maybe you make 50 bucks, you know, you're better off spending time with, you know, you're single, you spend time with friends. I'm married I, with kids. I go, you know, I, I, I go do something with the family that that's the beauty of trading and maximize the time based on what the market is giving you because you can't beat the market. And if you're banging your head against a wall right now, you're, you're going to struggle. No, you're going to get, you're going to get frustrated and then you're not ready when, the, when, when the busy times come back. No, absolutely. The market doesn't give a shit about anyone and, and you're never right. You're never right. And every time you think you know more than the market, you get totally, totally, totally humbled. I've heard it so many times and I've been humbled and I'm sure you've been humbled as well. Oh yeah. But uh, for me, it's the, mar the market's a cruel bitch. That's for sure. So. <laughs> survive in these times and, uh, and thrive when the market's it's, it's hotter and, and it's as simple as that. Be prepared as much as possible. Fail to prepare is preparing to fail. So just to wrap up again, make sure to uh, go to steadytrade.com, submit your questions, submit your audio. But the biggest takeaways from today are, I say, if you have to trade right now, if you're determined to trade, start, you know, start looking for earnings winners, start reading those earnings statements, see how the stocks react. I mean, you should know, you should have a feel for in uh, an ability to quickly read a press release, gauge sentiment, decide whether or not you can build the case around this stock. You know, is it a quality stock? Is it a good sector? You know, does this make sense? Then you paper trade it or you spreadsheet it or whatever. Number two is take the Steven route and just say, I've, I've, got, I've found through my 14 years of 14 uh, months of tracking trades that I got these one or two setups that work for me. And if they aren't there, I'm not going to trade. I'm not going to give the market money just because I'm a degenerate and I need the action, you know, wait for your setup. And if you don't know what that setup is yet, you should be paper trading anyway, or trading puny size. Um, yeah. Until trading. you, until you recognize through your tracking that, okay, this is working 50, 60, 70, 80% of the time. Wait until you find that. And, and this is not the time to be testing, you know, uh, random stuff because you're just going to get shook out, you know, long and short. Chop, 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 chop. I mean, look, look at the SPY in February. The market's just chop, chop. And then number three, you can do either of number one and two, but number three, take advantage of these times. Um, you're, you're all, 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 ultimately everything just boils down to your health. If you got a million bucks in the bank and you're sick and in bed every day, what's the point? You know, if you, if you're, if you can't 
have energy, if you can't have the freedom to spend time with family and friends, if you can't jump out of bed every morning hoping that there's a trade, even if there isn't, take care of yourself. Um, and even if that's just taking a walk around the block, you got to start somewhere. But take care of yourself physically and mentally, I think, and, and these are a lot of my presentations at a lot of the conferences, you know, the mind, people, people seem to have this weird theory that somehow the brain doesn't operate with the body, you know. Uh, now, there may be plenty of unhealthy people that are high achievers, but for the vast majority of us, the body and the mind are connected, and you got to take care of both to be a peak performer and have that energy. That, that was a beautiful speech, Tim. That was a beautiful closing. I just want to say one other thing. Uh, what you can do if you want to do something trading related is buy Michael Good's reading SEC filings. It's probably just as boring as watching the market, but, but, <laughs> but you'll at least learn something <laughs> valuable. And I'm sure you won't mind us saying that because Tim Sykes makes jokes about it all the time. Yep, yep. Oh, it's, and it's a great, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great DVD, but yeah, it's like, if you've, if, if, if you're struggling with insomnia, don't, don't get, don't, don't, Get any prescriptions. Obviously, I'm not a doctor. Asterisk. But, but if you're struggling with insomnia, buy Michael Good's reading SEC filings. Watch like 20 minutes a night. And man, you're you'll good to done. go. So, <laughs> just, just as boring as watching the market, but you'll learn something. So. Which reminds me, Michael Good will be an upcoming guest. So. Oh, brilliant. I love this man. I love this man. We'll have to play a game where we we'll swipe on Tinder together because we did it in Italy. It was the most fun. Well, did you, you, you said you watched the webinar. I, I did you, were you watching the webinar when I called prank called him yeah. or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching it. I was watching okay. it. I, I took some of the, but did you actually call him? Did he pick up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Ah, I didn't see that far along. I saw you had a call that he didn't know the number from, from Michigan yep. or something. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, that, yeah. And then he picked it up. Yeah, that was me. I yeah. called him and asked, I asked him if he was still selling the lawnmower. <laughs> Still selling a lawnmower on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right. Well, as usual, thank you for listening. We greatly appreciate uh, an iTunes review. We love all the comments on YouTube as well as on the website. And don't forget to go to steadytrade.com, submit those questions, and we would love to answer them in future episodes. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next and time. And I never minded sitting in cash. But you don't have to call me a day trader. Day trader. You never even called out a solid setup. We've heard my name a few times on Twitter. And I've seen it. On the Steady Trade Podcast. But the only time I know I hear Timothy Bowen is when my broker calls me with a fucking margin call. Hi, this is Latrina from Frederick, Maryland, and I like to clean my kitchen while listening to Stephen and Tim on the Steady Trade podcast. You can register to win prizes at their website, steadytrade.com. And if you really like what you hear, give the podcast a five-star rating and write a short review on iTunes. I did. And this is how we say goodbye in Frederick, Maryland. I'll that's another so podcast. <laughs> that, that's so the up. angry. Well, that's the angry, and not not the that. That's the angry Bowen podcast. Yeah. that's a side project, dude. I love the name of that. The angry Bowen podcast. My blog. Any, anytime, used to be, you, anytime you want to do the angry Bowen podcast, you let me know. We will do the angry Bowen podcast. I, I my blog for years. My the tagline on my blog was incoherent ramblings of an angry man. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. I was, I was kind of proud of that tagline, actually. Yeah.